Hey guys, it's Pussycat Purse, PC Purse for short. And if you're new to my channel, I am a pole dancer, pole instructor, pole competitor, pole enthusiast. So I'm here for all the pole newbies and just everybody into pole. So if that's you, you in the right spot. And today we are reviewing episode eight of P-Valley. So come on in and let's talk about it. All right, I got all the spoilers. I'm just gonna let you know that right now. So if you don't want to have the spoilers, don't watch this review. So we start the episode out with Mercedes and she's on the pole trying to get her life back because she really hasn't been the same since the accident. And she says like her shoulder feels heavy. I've never had my shoulder feel heavy. I've had my muscles feel sore, but I don't know what that is, but you know, she's got the whole gun thing going on to the supernatural thing. So she starts crying, having a fit, and Uncle Cliff comes in and tells her, you know, the problem's not really in her shoulders, it's in her head. And she says, well, maybe your issues with the pink are in your head too. So food for thought, but Mercedes really isn't having an easy time. And if you've ever had a pole injury, getting back on the pole after a bad accident, a bad fall, bad tumble, bad just experience can be a lot. Even walking into like a class and having a bad experience can kind of keep you from wanting to get back. And it's just important to just take your time and go really slow and not force yourself to get back to certain things because your body remembers it and that fear response is natural. Like your body doesn't want to have this accident again. So if you're feeling like you need to take it slow, take it slow. Don't try to rush yourself to get back to things like Mercedes. So the next scene is Uncle Cliff and Lil Murder. And I love this scene because it reminds me of Teak, right? And because when we saw Teak get his hair cut by fire, it was like a premonition of like things that were coming. He's hot headed, just like about to blow his top, right? And then with this one, Uncle Cliff is carving Mur well, you know, etching murder into his head. And he's doing a real good job. This is one of my favorite hairstyles of Lil Murder. But um it's kind of like foreshadowing what's to come. Like he's got murder on his mind. He's hot headed. He's a little irrational. Just like he's becoming the character, Lil Murder. And of course, Uncle Clifford is kind of distracted. He's still trying to check up on his grandma and just hearing that, you know, she's still alive in the hospital, which I am thankful for. I'm not ready for Grandma Ernestine to go yet. Please, let's keep Grandma Ernestine. But um, they discuss the fact that they were intimate the night before. And <laughs> Uncle Clifford calls it olive branch booty. And he's like, it was more than that, you know, because it was unprotected. And Little Murder is saying that he's safe. And it's funny because he's actually very dangerous that we're going to see by the end of this episode. But, you know, last week I was saying, was Little Murder safe last week when he was with Teak? And it seems that he was. But when he asked Uncle Cliff, like, yo, when I was out there, I was being safe. Were you? We ain't really get an answer. So I'm still hoping that this does not come up as another thing later on. But Lil Murder is having Uncle Cliff do his hair for something important, but he won't tell Cliff what it is. So this this air of secrecy between them is, is bubbling. I gotta say, it's a certain spot for dudes that will have you do their hair for the next one, <laughs> which is essentially what he's doing. I mean, Teak is gone. Kind of doesn't apply, but at the same time, like, getting your hair done by your boob for the next one. <laughs> All right, let me stop. But um, he can at least be honest about what's going on. So then we see Mercedes running. And I love to see Mercedes running with her dog. Maybe because I have a dog. I don't know. And her dog is named, what is his name? Black and Mild or something like that. It's something to do with blunts, which is hilarious to me. And um, they run in the main. I will say, it. this show do be coming through with the eye candy. I remember Maine last season, I was like, oh, where he at? And then we only had him for like one episode, maybe two. Same thing this season, where Maine at, hey? So he invites her to a party, and this is like the first person that we ever, this is the only person we ever see Mercedes really get flustered over. So it's cute. I like to see the two of them together. They look very good together on screen too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next I'm guessing Miss Mississippi used the phone and got in contact with Autumn because the two of them meet at a diner. And of course, Miss Mississippi has bruises all over her face still, but she winds up giving Autumn birth certificates for her and her kids because I guess Autumn is going to help her get some new identification so that she can run away. And she starts talking to her about it and not telling anybody her plans. And you get, you can't really tell what's going on 
in Mississippi's mind. Like you can see that she's thinking about it. I can't tell if she's really going for the plan or not, but she winds up leaving and telling uh, Autumn on the way out, like, you know, if I look up your name, Haley Colton, like it says that she's drowned. And she's like, yeah, you see, I'm here. So clearly she's like, I can help you get away if you want to get away, but is she actually gonna take her up on it and leave? I'm going to say, since she's one of our main characters, probably not. She's going to have to stay in the town. My bet is we're going to have to kill Derek off some type of way. Like, he needs to go anyway, so let's just speed this up. But they come up with the plan that she needs to go back to the pink. And that when she's there at the pink, that will be her escape route. So we can see that she's on her way back to the pink. We're about to get our original setup back because we already know Mercedes didn't leave. Mercedes last dance never happened. She's still trying to get her life. She's trying to get back to the pole instead of leaving. So let's see, we getting that old thing back and I'm here for it. We just got to get rid of Derek. Once Miss Mississippi leaves, we see that there's a smear campaign being run on Andre. Now Andre has been saying that his father is dead. Come to find out his father is in prison for life for committing a murder. So this is just going to be horrible. So we see Andre talking to Corbin about it. Corbin's all upset because if he looks bad, then his brother has a better chance of winning. Then we see there's also a smear campaign on Patrice, but Patrice stands in all her stuff. She's like, y'all already know I was a hoe. <laughs> I hoe, so you didn't vote me for mayor. And Corbin is like, at least she stands it. And I'm like, that is so smart. And it's funny because I keep saying that even though she's trying to be a preacher and wanting to do all this stuff, she always looks like a hoe. And that's just her brand and she is making it work for her. So then Autumn goes to see the lady who is in control of the casinos to talk about negotiating this money. And the woman lets her know that since Andre's campaign is looking like it might not go over too well and maybe there'll be some hold up with the casinos, that she doesn't really have to give her this money because she can just hold out until like new bills come up and she can get it pushed through. But this girl can't really afford to hold out. So she's like, what you want to do? So now Autumn is taking her risk and she's like, we'll wait till the elections, see who wins, and then you might be in trouble. So we'll see. Mm. Next, Lil Murder goes to see Woody, his manager. And, you know, his manager works at a funeral home, so he's preparing Teak's body. And it's this itty bitty little bullet hole to his temple. And I was just sitting there like, I thought this man shot himself in the head. So how is it that we're going to have an open casket? Woody said he could work miracles and make it look like nothing ever happened. So I had to look it up. And I saw that as long as it's not a shotgun, I'm sorry if this is triggering for anybody. But I was just very curious, like, how, like, what? It didn't make any sense to me. And they said, as long as it's not a shotgun, that is possible. So I guess it's possible. But he did a really good job. Teak looks really great. And he asked Lil Murder about the tape. And apparently it happened when he was younger and he was doing it for his family. And so Woody said, well, listen, I handled it. And if it's going to come out any other way, I'll handle it. So they talk about death and about it being around. And Woody is saying, you know, you lose one person, a new person comes. And that as far as the murder that he committed at Rome deserved it. So it is what it is. And Lil Murder is just like, it's weighing heavy on him. And he's asking him, why me? And Woody was like, you know, somebody's got to make it out. Why not you? And I just thought, because Lil Murder, like he said to T, be making self-destructive choices sometimes. <sighs> All right. So now we back at the pank. And Mercedes is warming up. We got Roulette and Whisper on the stage and they're supposed to be practicing. So Autumn is there and she knows Mercedes isn't ready. So she's like, oh yeah, you working on your new routine? Let me see it. So she makes a dance in front of everybody. And of course, Mercedes isn't ready and it looks really bad. Roulette and Whisper off on the side talking about her. And then Autumn is like, look, clearly she's not ready. We're not going to have the, the two in the back like be the headliner. I got somebody. She pulls up Mississippi. So now Diamond is like, and everybody else is like, oh, hell no. And the two little boxy twins is like, oh, hell yes, it's about to be juicy. And I cannot wait because we got Diamond in the club all happy, all in love, you know, with um, Big Bone kissing and smiling and stuff. We've never seen him like that. And then in box Keyshawn and it's like, ooh, about to throw a little monkey wrench in the business. So <laughs> that was cute. And then... 
we see Mississippi in the dressing room. And so Roulette was feeling like, oh, we love you. We love your lashes. You want some Coke? And she's like, I'm good. And when she tries to get like her old space back, Mercedes is like, oh, you think you're just going to get it? Yeah, you bet. You bet. This. I missed you. And then they're both like, dang, I can't believe I'm back here. Mercedes tells her, it must mean you don't have anywhere else to go. And she's like, yeah. Which makes me sad because not all dancers are just dancing because they don't have anything else to do. But unfortunately, they're both back there because that's what wound up happening. Mercedes never got her school. And as far as Miss Mississippi went with traveling and touring and making money, she's still back at the paint because her freedom is like not there because of her home situation, which is crazy. So now Cliff is just pissed. He was yelling at Autumn. We heard it through the walls. He grabs a bunch of stuff. He walks out. He's in his car having a meltdown. So technically, he's not crying in the paint. He's crying in his car that's seated, seated outside of the paint. And then he sees like a vision of his mom telling him, you know, get the tears out. Go ahead. But after that, you won't get even. That's what you got to do. So it's his composure. It's his strength. So we know he got to do something. So then they have Teek's funeral. And it's really nice. He looks really good. Um, it's really emotional. Lil Murder gives him the little thing on his nose that they used to do. And um, when they put his casket inside of the car, that shot stood out to me so much because you're facing, like Lil Murder is facing you, but then you're kind of looking at him. It almost looks like is death ahead of him or behind him, behind him, he's got, you know, the people in his gang and stuff. And it's all these flowers that are like blooming like life that are decorating the inside of the casket, but it's like death, right? So it's kind of like giving life to death, which is kind of foreshadowing for a little murder. We're gonna get to that in a little bit, but it's, you know, it was a really deep moment. And then there was a mirror on top. So it was just like him reflecting death coming towards him or like him breathing life into it. it was just a lot and I was like man this shot is so good even the colors it's like flowers but there's like red behind it like blood like life I'm like wow this is really really pretty let me know if that shot stood out to you or what you thought about that one but then when Lil Murder walks away towards the light he literally walks towards his gang members and they're like yo these people are saying that they killed T and we got to retaliate. And he gives Lil Murder the look. And I'm like, I know Lil Murder's not about to commit a murder. He's a, he's about to be a superstar. You can't be committing murder. Like somebody else in the game should have handled that. I'm not saying sh people should be killing each other, but I'm why should Lil Murder be the one to take care of this? That don't make no type of sense. No type of sense. What, I'm about to be a rising star. You want me to go out there to the, nah, somebody else needs to be handling this. So now we got Keyshawn and Mercedes practicing and Mercedes is still not looking good. So the little boxy twins whisper a roulette talking about her being past her prime and just looking bad. And I want to say in the pole community, maybe not in the strip in the stripper world, but in the pole community, there is very little body shaming and very little ageism. People are like, get it how you live for as long as you can. They're very encouraging, very much like, yes, do you, right? Even in the clubs, like there's always an old dancer, but she's usually there for a reason. Like she's been getting it on and cracking for, since way back. So don't discriminate on the old chicks in the club. But they also talk about Whisper thinking about taking that guy up on his offer. He just wanted to like give her head and give her a few thousand. And remember Roulette was like, oh really? She gets to have it all easy like that? It must be nice. But She's saying she's thinking about it. So it's like, oh gosh, they really about to be doing all this craziness together. And we have no idea how crazy it's about to get. So they're basically saying that Mercedes isn't ready and she's upset about it. But then she gets a call from Terrica. When she runs out, come to find out, Shell found out about the abortion. I don't know how. And they have like a little tiff between the two of them. <sighs> Shell is calling her names and stuff like that. But Mercedes says, you know, well, there's a reason she came to me. And we can see that Tarika is more on her side. And she's like, listen, I'm going to take her home. But thanks to you, I know how to drive. And there's this look of like, we're on the same team. So it's nice that she and her mom are bonding. I'm happy for Mercedes for that. Then we jump to Autumn and Andre. And she had been trying to get in contact with him. And he didn't answer her call. So she showed up with some moonshine. And they start talking about like their parents and Haley says that she doesn't know who either of her birth parents are. So even though his dad is 
in prison, at least if he wanted to find out the story of like his life and stuff, he has the option. And so he's lucky, but they're just trading stories and not too happy about what's going on. Okay, so then next we find out about Roulette, how she got this name, right? So Whisper is done and this dude tries to play her. He throws the money on the floor, first problem. She picks it up and tries to show her second problem. Roulette comes out like, what happened? So then Whisper starts running her mouth. I don't know why people think that when they are in dangerous situations, they can just be running their mouth all crazy. She's in a very vulnerable spot. And she just starts running her mouth about how this guy can't please women and all this other stuff. He's already being aggressive with her. I'm not saying that she can't speak her mind, but I am saying time and place, don't push yourself in danger. So she's just running off at the mouth and he starts choking her. Roulette pulls out a gun and she's like, nah, get off of her. He lets go and he and Roulette backs up. So she's got the gun in his face and she makes Roulette take his clothes off. She assaults him with the gun. She makes him put the gun in his mouth and suck it. And she tells him to moan the way that he wanted Whisper to moan. And they basically rob him from his for his car. <laughs> and they assaulted him. So when they run out, he's telling them, I'm going to kill you. And Roulette is like, I'd like to see you try. Also, she pulled the gun on herself. to like She played a game Russian Roulette with him. She pulled the gun on herself. It didn't go off. And she fired at him twice and it didn't go off. She told me he was still alive. So she squared... She scared like the life out of this man. And we get to see she a little off. Sis is definitely a little off and she plays roulette with her life in a lot of different ways. And I'm like, this guy knows where you work. You met him at work. Like he was your, your trick first. Now he knows whisper. Like when he says he's gonna come after you, why do you not believe him? I don't know how she thinks this is too smart to just leave him walking around like that. So we'll see how she gets out of that one. And it was crazy because right before he showed up, Whisper was like, my tingly senses is going off. I don't know if this is such a good idea. It wasn't such a good idea. Then Lil Murder commits a Lil Murder. I was like, what? So Lil Murder, we already know, his gang told him what was up. He rolls up and finds Pico. That's the one that was saying that he killed T. And he's like, so you claiming a body that you didn't, you didn't do. And Pico was like, listen, I didn't do it. Like, I, I've just been claiming it because my gang been clowning me. Like, you know me, you know my family, you know my kids. And he's like, yeah, I'll tell your kids that you you loved them. And he just blasts off in this man's chest and kills him. I'm like, oh, Lil Murder committed murder. And it's crazy because we know he's in the gang. We know he's gang affiliated. We know his name is Lil Murder. But I just kind of thought of it as like entertainment. I never thought about the fact that maybe he has committed a murder or would be down to commit a murder. I'm still not sure if this is his first murder because when he was speaking to Teak about it, Teak seemed tormented by the fact that he had committed a few people and like he had this devil on his shoulder. But Lil Murder never seemed like he had the weight of murder on his shoulder before. But then I think in this scene, we're also seeing a shift in his character because of the trauma, because when the guy's saying he didn't do it, he's saying, yeah, you don't know anything about the weight of the body. Like, and he starts describing what happened in the car, like um, T gasping for air, choking, throwing up, the blood, the bullet, like the things that are traumatizing him. And I'm like, he kind of had this fog on look in his eyes a little bit like T used to have, where he was just like crazy headed. And then again, like T, we get that fire in his head. Lil Murder's got the murder in the back of his head. And then he kills this boy. And I'm like, oh, wow. And up until now, Lil Murder's just been very sweet. He's so sweet and romantic and all these other things. And now there's a reason for us to see him in a different sort of light. You know, like, in some ways, I guess he's a little less likable. He's less, he's not a clean character anymore. Like, he's a lot more three-dimensional now. He does such a good job. So then Mercedes goes to Maine's party and she's not even there more than like two minutes before they're like, yo, Pico just got killed. We got to ride out. And Maine is like getting ready to run. She's like, you just got out of prison this morning. You really about to go get yourself involved in this? No, let people that don't have on an ankle bracelet go handle this. So he goes to Mercedes' house and she starts talking to him about how like the murder affected him, affected her. And he starts telling her, you know, I wish I could have been there for you. I can be there for you now. Of course, just, of course, just like 
offering up, you know. And she's like, eh, it's not really what I'm looking for. I need more than that. And I felt it on that one because she's like, mm, I'd love to get some of that. But eh, is that all you come with? Just that? That's not enough. I felt it on that one. But mm, man. So then Cliff goes to his mom's grave site and just talks to her and talks to her about like, please save grandma, like he's not ready. And just about feeling like he's failing and stuff, but just trying to regain his strength. Then Roulette goes to her boo with the stolen car. She's like, I need you to strip this car down. And he's just looking at her like, yo, this girl is up to no good. And she's just running game on him like, yeah, I know. He's like, what can I get from you? And she gives him some kisses. Like, this is what you get right now. And he's going to strip the car down for her. And it's just really, really funny. Like, she got that life. I'm loving Roulette's character. Also, I love her wig. So, let me tell y'all. I'm thinking I should do some type of tutorial on a wig like that. Or at least give it a shot. Because you already know the cheetah animal cat thing is part of the PC purse thing. So I think that's gonna be coming up, but maybe I'll show you guys how I made this wig too, cause it's kind of inspired by this show. And this wig glows in the dark. The only reason I didn't post it yet is because Amazon stopped selling this wig. So it was hard for me to like recommend it to you, but I did make this wig like nightlife inspired because it glows in the dark and you really want to glow. But I digress. At the very end, we see Little Murder and it's like, He's in the studio about to rap. He's got blood on his hands, murder in the back of his head. And I think he is fully like the character that he wants to be in terms of like his rap persona. Like he's just got a lot of things kicking. It's sad that that's kind of etched into his head because it's like, woo, but where is his character about to take us? Let me know how you're feeling about it. I am like, oh my gosh so shocked by it but i feel like i don't know the music been good i think the music is still going to be good but oh i just wonder what his payback is going to be for all these bad acts because i feel like at some point he's going to have to pay for it so our tutorial for today i figured i would talk to you guys about what to expect from pole dancing the good the bad and the ugly and if pole is something that you want to get into, I just think you should know what to expect. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, so if you are just starting out with pole dancing, then you might be like, all right, what did I get myself into? Or what should I expect? So we're going to talk about some of those things. So the number one thing that you're going to feel is like, ouch. <laughs> Your body is going to be super sore, maybe a little bit stiff and that's very normal. Like your body is building like muscle and strength. So when that happens, the only thing you want to do is just give yourself breaks. Like don't just keep pushing if your body is really tired. If you're in class and your body feels really tired, take a break, maybe take a day off from going to class. Try to get massages, try to sit in a sauna or sit in a hot bath. You just want to keep your muscles really warm and activated. Maybe do light stretching or like light moderate exercise between really, really intense classes. And just try to build your strength and not just rush into things. Because if you do that, you'll get injured. So just take your time and just know that it's going to happen. Like you might be in a constant state of soreness for a while. But after a while, <laughs> your body will get used to it and things won't hurt as bad anymore. Like when you first learn to move, things hurt a lot, but after a while, that move won't hurt. But then when you learn something new, that might hurt. So you just gotta get used to it. The next thing is bruises. I just had a bruise heal. All under here was like purple and like black and it looked really bad, but it healed in about four days. Before I could even film this video, the bruises were gone. But also I have like this dry patch of skin from where I also got a pole burn which we'll talk about in a second, but you might look like a Dalmatian. Um, common places to get the bruises are like here when you're doing bicep grips or the top of the foot is common, inside your knees, inside your thighs, really anywhere you can bang your body into the pole or um, anywhere where you're squeezing really, really tight. So 
one, you're going to just have to get used to it. Like that's going to happen. But two, just body awareness and like taking your time so that you're not just throwing your body into the pole. But as you build your strength and you have more control over where your body is going, you're less likely to bang it around. So it's just one of those things in the beginning. You might get a lot more of it than you do as you start to advance. So then, yeah, pole burns. It's kind of like a rug burn, like a friction burn, just from like your body rubbing against the pole. And sometimes your skin can get kind of like leathery, snaky. Like that's what I've got going on here from where I got this pole burn. And it it feels kind of ugh, but <laughs> it might get a callus there. I don't know. I don't think this one was that bad, but if I kept practicing that, it might like get a tough patch of skin right there. Again, that's just something that happens. You just have to be careful with your body. And then lastly, calluses. Oh my gosh, right along here, people tend to get calluses really bad. Mine come and go really quickly. So yeah, but sometimes they'll, they'll peel really bad. That again is normal. You can file it. Don't pick it. Don't go crazy. You don't want your hands to go raw, but just try not to squeeze so tight or don't rely heavily on gripping aids. Um, they make your life easier sometimes, but they can also make things harder. I would say practice it without the grip first. And then once you get a feeling of it, then you can start adding grip or just put grip in places where you know you're going to sweat a lot on your body. But if you need to do anything flowy, you don't want to have too much grip on your hands or on your body. You'll just get stuck on the pole. So just trust yourself. So now let's talk about the good things that are going to happen from pole dancing. So number one, you are going to get so much stronger just inside and out. You'll find that like your power increases, your strength, your stamina. Um, you're going to get a lot of muscle definition. You'll get muscles in places you didn't know you could get muscles. Like for me, one place that always pops out first, uh, first is like right here, this muscle right here. <laughs> and I always feel like a bodybuilder, like, oh my God, why am I so frolic? Like if you look on my Instagram, is it on my poll Instagram? I don't know. I'll try to post it maybe to my stories or something, but this muscle just pops out. I look like a female wrestler. It's crazy from certain angles. Um, but yeah, um, weight loss, um, toning, what else? Body confidence. Like I always say, it's a really positive, body positive community. So people will always be encouraging you no matter what you look like, but just lifting your own body weight having that kind of confidence and that kind of strength just does something to your personality like you feel really good about yourself also starting like a fitness journey and and building your strength and actually being able to see it and feel it i think does something to your psyche it makes you feel a lot stronger also your flexibility because you're going to be stretching and things like that um you're going to get a lot more flexible so we all know that's good your bones are going to get stronger. Your joints can get stronger, even though you need to be careful because like I have kind of like weak joints. So you do want to take supplements and things like that if you need to, because it can also be like really taxing on your joints. Um, some of the grips, like the push pulls and stuff like that. So it'll strengthen you, but you still need to be careful. Um, also just like coordination and balance gets better because you're doing more dance classes and just things to deal with timing. So you'll get better at that. And yeah. Oh, you'll sleep a lot better. Cause when I work out really hard, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> um, and I think it just, for me, going to the gym got easier once I started pole dancing because I wanted to get stronger so that I could do more tricks. So I think it kind of encourages you to try other things. So I think all around, it just kind of helps you out like internally, externally, you'll make friends <laughs> that have common interests. It's really cool. So there are positives and there are some downsides, but to me, the positives outweigh the negative. Did you learn anything new? Find out any surprising facts. <laughs> Pole dancing is weird. It's weird. Uh -huh. But yeah, I think we got two more episodes left to this show. Oh, I don't know where it's going, but it's getting good. Let me know what you think. I will see you for the next one.